Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to our ongoing live coverage here from day seven of CMA Industry Week. I'm your host, Ben Wu. And we are shifting gears to another major distributor in Canada known as Automobility. And Automobility has a bunch of products that we definitely have to dig into for the rest of the day. And we're going to kick it off real strong with a brand that is uh, certainly very interesting. It's uh, with its European roots based out of Italy. And, you know, many say that, you know, you could judge a brand by the type of people that it associates itself with. And the next presenter I have is a no stranger to the field of educating people in the 12 volt industry with a rich history. None other than legendary trainer, Mr. Ken Ward. Welcome to CMA Industry Week. Hey, Ben. Thanks for having me. Uh, so I see they chose they brought in the big guns for this. Uh, yes, they, uh, obviously travel isn't what it was a few years ago. And I'm really happy that they invited me to come in and, and share some things about Hertz with your audience and with Canada. That's great. We've got Canadian dealers tuning in, wanting to learn all about Hertz audio and seeing if it fits into their portfolio. And I'm sure you're going to be able to share with us, not only the products, but a little bit of the, the story, I hope behind the brand and, and where it sits, uh, you know, in the landscape of all things. I would be happy to do that. I, I was actually a, a Hertz dealer years ago, and I didn't know some of the things that I've learned since. And so I, I think they are helpful uh, for a dealer. Um, I know that uh, we had an opportunity to develop a, a video uh, episode for you guys. We didn't actually have the time to conclude that. But one of the things that I wanted to share before we get into some of the visuals that I did develop for, for this is um, Hertz supplied us with a video uh, for one of their new newest product uh, categories. And I was wondering if you could uh, fire that up and we could show people the the sort of the vibe and the, the emotional process that Hertz believes music creates for our customers. Yeah, absolutely. I call it setting the mood. Let's go to the video. I, I um, love that video. Well, might I say I totally relate with the guy with the elevator for his car because mine looks the same as that. I wish I had one of those. <laughs> yes, uh, if I have anything like that. Th there's an, that is so, this so nice. There's an interesting um, theme to the video that I didn't think about the first time I saw it. Um, the, the two parts are that it's, it's, a, it's a classic domestic market car and that North America is the biggest market for uh, boats, uh, for boat audio, for marine audio. And so Hertz is showing uh, their commitment to car audio, their commitment to cars. And uh, you got to see a lot of the marine systems and the products we're going to talk about today. Uh, so um, without further ado, let me go ahead and let's let's switch over to the uh, the visuals. And let me take you through the, the Hertz brand. Um, Let's see here. So we we know that most of us have heard about them from the point of view of Hertz Mobile. It's the oldest product category they've been in. 
Uh, they've got some beautiful products. Marine and power sports is a new category that we're going to talk about in detail today. And part of that is timing. The timing for industry week has really tied into getting ready for the marine season. Um, I uh, think of the marine season as the uh, remote start season, but out of phase. So here we come. We better be ready for, the, for that business because this is the time for it. Um, they've been really committed to marine and they put a lot of engineering resources into developing products that are not me too products. Uh, power sports uses a lot of marine type development. And so we've got some power sports gear to talk about too. Now, motorcycle is probably the newest category. And it's again, a category that I feel a little bit ignorant about. I'm not a Harley guy. Uh, so I've had to do some learning to be able to share what Hertz has done in this category. And it, once again, it's also Harley season for mer motorcycle audio. So we're going to cover those and talk about the specifics that they've brought to the market. Because with each of these categories, you cannot take a home audio speaker driver and put it into a car and get the performance that, you, that Hertz wanted. You cannot put it into a boat. You cannot put it into a motorcycle and get the performance that is required. And so all of these products have involved uh, bringing new designs to market. And one of the ways that they can do that with all of these different speaker categories, and I think you and I have used this photograph before, this is the Lavoce Speaker Factory, which is 100% owned by Electromedia, and which has a research and development team that is comprised 100% of uh, Electromedia employees. And this is really rare in car audio today. It doesn't matter how famous the brand is, very few of them make speakers in their own facilities. And some of them, unfortunately, just order off the shelf product and get their badge put on the front. So this is a big differentiator for the Hertz brand. Now, they've also developed their own internal loudspeaker design and testing software suite. And what these allow them to do is test prototypes on a much quicker cycle than they could before and that most companies can. Uh, this is a big commitment to the computing and development side to be able to develop product faster. There's also a test that you probably heard of called Clipple. And uh, Clipple, one of the things it does is measure distortion of large signal uh, speaker behavior. Uh, we Most of us have heard of small signal specs, which are teal small parameters, but Clipple tests what happens when you're really driving the speaker. And some speaker brands will use Clipple to develop a new product, but once it's designed, they're done. And uh, Electromedia and Hertz use Clipple to validate the product as it comes off the uh, production floor. And so all the production is tested against those specs. So Marine, I want to talk start with Marine because as I mentioned, it's going to be boat season before we know it. And I think this is a good opportunity for dealers who haven't, I, I, I'll say it, a dip their toe in the water yet. Um, <laughs> because some brands have had really spotty availability in Marine for the past 12 months or so because they've had trouble getting deliveries from their external suppliers. So this may be something that could really help out a dealer who is committed to Marine but hasn't found the partner yet. Um, I love this quote that I, I talked to somebody about. Uh, everyone's jumping into Marine Audio, but if you want to be a serious Marine Audio line, there's four things you really need to have. Uh, one of them is great tower speakers. There's a lot of companies that have said, hey, look, here's our coax, uh, and, and that's all they have. Um, you need great oversized coaxials. There's a lot of companies that have said, look at our great six inch coaxial, and, and that's all they have. Um, you need to have infinite baffle subwoofers, and that's something that a lot of North American companies may not be as familiar with because infinite baffle subwoofers in cars really fell out of style around 20 years ago. Um, Hertz being a European company had a lot of experience with infinite baffle subwoofers and, and that's what we have in the marine line. Um, and actual marine electronics. And this is something that I really wanna give uh, props to uh, Canada about. Um, there's a number of dealers in the United States who don't follow the regulations about using marine grade electronics in a boat. Uh, and they'll just put car amps or car subs in, even if it's not uh, in alignment with their local regulations. Uh, the dealers in Canada seem to be a lot more aware of this. They're, they're familiar with what's required. And so Hertz has a full line of marine electronics as well that will help you follow those rules. So 
Um, when they started developing this line, they went nuts in terms of the certification. Uh, they have uh, water jet testing and sealed testing st uh, equipment to make sure the amps are IP64, the speakers are IP65, the source units are IP66. Um, there's also UV uh, resistance testing and salt fog testing. There's long numbers associated with those roles that I have not memorized, but I know they've passed them. So they really took it seriously. They didn't, they didn't farm that out. Um, this is the tower speaker that I was talking about earlier, the HTX8. And uh, I call it an eight because it's eight inches across. And as you can see, not only does it have all those certifications, but it's RGB multicolor compatible. If you order the correct model, you can hook it up to the Hertz RGB controller and get all the backlighting synchronized through all the product on the boat. Um, here is the white version. That's a subtle way of letting you know you can get it in black or white. And one of the things you can see here, I'm not sure if you can see my little arrow, but okay. one of the things you can see here is that there are 64 different increments that you can install the speaker into the can to make sure that all of the grills and all of the badges are aligned on all the speakers that are on the tower. The same thing is true of the badge at the, uh, the front end of the can it can be aligned in those increments as well. And it can be backlit so that it's part of the RGB illumination circuit. Now you can see a little bit of the clamp, but if I'm gonna go to another slide here and show you some detail on the clamp, the clamp can work with a round or a square bar. I think most of the bars are round, but I am not a boat guy either. Um, you can see a big black connector roughly in the middle of the clamp exploded view. Uh, by the way, the clamp is made of 316 marine grade stainless steel, so they're, they're not screwing around on this. Um, you can rotate the clamp 20 degrees for, so that the speaker can be angled where you need it. Um, but the cool part here is that the entire speaker bottom clamp and assembly can be removed from the boat. You can unplug the speaker. If you're, taking, if you're docking somewhere where you're a little bit worried and you don't want your big tower speakers attracting attention, you can actually take them off the clamp, unplug them, and take them with you. Same thing if you're putting the boat up for storage for the winter, you can take the speakers and not leave them in the boat. I thought that was a cool innovation. Uh, here's the oversized coaxial. The oversized coax, it's not immediately obvious from the picture, but the tweeter is an oversized 1.4 inch tweeter. Uh, you can see that it's got a, a acoustic lens over the top to provide a load. Um, and it's also got a really good passive crossover. You can see one of the coils for the passive crossover is visible in the cutaway. What you can't see is that there's a breaker for the tweeter and it resets to keep you from blowing up the tweeter if your customer gets a little bit excited with a, an over, uh, <clears throat> maybe playing a song too loud off their phone. Once again, black and white and RGB multicolor. So there's a couple of essentials. Uh, here's something about, we're going to run some specs by you for a moment. There's a test you can do where you put a speaker in a panel. It's called an IEC panel test. And this was a respected competitor in the marine category. And you can see they had a full range response, basically. And they were louder in the trouble. And you need a marine speaker to be louder in the trouble because we don't have a lot of glass windows reflecting the highs back in the way you do in a car cabin. So if I put in the... Hertz speaker, you can see that it's got a smoother response. Above 2K, you can see that it, it is gradually increasing in a, in a linear fashion. And part of that is because the, the, the tweeter is handling more of the signal and it's a more robust uh, tweeter. Now, let me show you what this looks like if you measure it off axis, because most of these coaxials go down low in the, uh, in the boat, similar to where they go in a car. But you can see here the gap, it goes from six to 10 dB, which is like using four times bigger an amplifier in that 2K and up region. You get more output for free. Now, if we do 45 degrees off axis, you can see suddenly, and this is true for some car speakers as well, you can see this big dip from 2K to about 8K. And that has to do with where the, the eight inch woofer can't handle it and the tweeter isn't helping yet. And if we look at the Hertz speaker, you can see a linear response all the way across. We don't have that big hole between 2K and 8K. And that means that you'll get more output to your ears, which is kind of what we where we need it. 
3 dB to 9 dB means we get at least double the power as if we doubled the size of the amplifier. So here are the six and a half inch coaxials. There's two different series of six and a half inch coaxials. The HMS six and a half is in the same family as the eight. And then on the right, you can see the HEX six and a half. This one is in marine, but it's used a lot in power sports as well. The grill is paintable and it is also, uh, you can backlight. So here are the subs. And once again, you can see I am, uh, they're black or white. They're also RGB color backlit to match everything else. They really had a theme there. And something that they did here that I think is really cool, um, this may be a prejudice on my part, but I think you can tell how committed a company is to subwoofers if they offer them to you in more than one impedance. And, and almost every Hertz subwoofer line offers you multiple impedances. These are available in four and two. Um, and I think when you do that, that means you're really committed to the woofer category. I got a question for you, Ken. Are there yes, different sir. applications for uh, sealed versus infinite baffle, or they only do infinite baffle? They're actually set up to be able to operate sealed or infinite baffle. Okay. And one of the keys to infinite baffle, um, and the rule that I learned was that if you play an octave lower, you need four times the excursion. So the reason a lot of speakers don't work infinite baffle is quite simply they run out of excursion. So... So these are high excursion subs. Yes, that's exactly. You can see they're pretty deep. So they we talked about match. Uh, sorry, Ken, if you could just go back one more time, just yeah, an yeah. attention to detail I want to point out here. They actually color match the basket. Yes. Not just the front, which they, is interesting. The, they are very specific. Uh, that um, And I've seen that in other places that we'll circle around to in a minute. Okay. That's a good, good noticing. Um, so they've got two source units. The one on the left, the, the HMR-10, that's kind of a classic gauge form factor uh, a source unit. Um, it's got AM, FM, and weather bands. The picture you see is of the European model, which also has digital audio broadcasting. We don't have that in North America, so there is a North American model that does not have uh, a DAB in it. Uh, it's got Bluetooth streaming, uh, 50 watts, IP66 rated, so the HMR-10 fits into a pretty standard source unit category for Marine. But the HMR-20 uh, is a step forward in a couple of ways. It's got Bluetooth 5.0, and it's got a 3-inch color screen. And if you put that combo together, you can get ID3 tag information for pretty much everything you're listening to. Um, it also has a USB port. You can see on the screen that it's using the USB port right now. So if you don't want to use your phone as a source on the boat, you can just take a USB stick with you. It's got dual zone control on the HMR20. It's got a subwoofer level out for zone one, and it's got four preset EQ curves. Um, it's also got uh, a battery voltage gauge that is also built into the HMR10. So if you're listening without the engine running, it'll keep you out of trouble. Subwoofer control as well? Subwoofer control for zone one. For zone you, one. If you're using just a single zone, then you get two, two outputs plus subwoofer control. So, oh, also the backlighting is adjustable, so you can make it match all the other lighting in your boat, which, which is which is important. Now, I've been asked a number of times, why would you want DSP in a boat? <laughs> and, and the answer for me is I use DSP to guarantee that I get good results. And if that's how you think about it for cars, then that's a great way to think about it for boats. Um, one of the things that I teach a lot, you mentioned that I do a lot of training, um, we use delay in cars to overcome phase cancellations. And phase cancellations don't just mess up your stereo image. They will keep your system from playing as loudly as you might want it to. And that's a big deal in the marine world because there's a lot of noise to overcome. So I'm going to show you a couple of screenshots from the user interface for the HMD8, which is unique. It's different than the car DSPs. And I, I want to show you how, how it looks. Um, First of all, you can see up here, there are three different zones that you can tune the HMD-8 to. I should mention that the HMD-8 has eight amplified channels plus a pre-out for subwoofer amplifiers. So you can literally set up three different zones. Now, when you're setting them up, you can do OEM integration the way you would in a car, or you can just use an optical input or an RCA input. Uh, you have 
down here, you can see we are in graphic EQ mode. This little click here, um, you can choose graphic or parametric modes. Some technicians prefer graphic. Some technicians prefer parametric. parametric. And <laughs> that's available. So whichever one you like is great. Now, when you use certain functions, oh, and something I haven't really documented in these, in these visuals, but you can see a, scattered around the UI question mark icons. Those question mark icons will pull up the help file. So if you are new to the product and you're like, well, what does this do? You click on the question mark and it brings up the help uh, uh, documentation for that function of the DSP. Uh, so it's really like a, a, a guided tour of the DSP for you. Now, if I go here, you can see we're in the parametric mode down at the bottom. So now we've got the gain slider and then what frequency we want and how wide the bandwidth is. Um, and that that's nice. I like that. Now here we've popped out the graphic EQ graph. And so now we've got a big chart from 20 to 20 K and we can see exactly what our EQ is doing very easily. And you can see here, we've got every one of the output channels across the top that we can select when we're doing our tuning. Now, one more thing. This is the delay chart. And so if you assume that the listening position is right there in the center, what you do as a tuner is you click on the speaker in the center and drag it to the proper distance. And the distance is indicated of in the upper right. So it is literally the simplest of all the processors to set distance for. And Question. when you're sitting one, you've got these circles. So if you know two speakers are the same distance away, just make sure they're on the same circle. It's the simplest, most intuitive way to set speaker distance that I've seen. And I think that's important for boats because boats are inherently asymmetric like cars. Well, I have a comment to this, Ken. Mm -hmm. You know, a boat scenario, very different from a from a car scenario where you you know in a car you you're basically selfish and you want the best uh, sound for the person driving that's the pr you know prime position for setting DSP, but you know I have a party boat and sometimes yeah I want I want myself driving the boat to hear best, but in other situations I'm going to park up on a beach I want I have a little area where I have beverages and I got a great view and I want that to sound best. Or maybe I'm just cruising on a nice evening sunset, enjoying some wine, chilled out, and I want a little, you know, ambiance. Do I have options for different presets? You absolutely do. You have the ability to select different presets and different zones. Mm. So, so that's this why you need is DSP for Marine. The, the control center that they thought of for this, I really think makes the job much easier. Um, it, because it's an eight-channel amplifier, but it is bridgeable, you can set it up as a big four channel amp or a staggered six channel amp. Um, I think I've actually, um, one example that we worked up is you could run four oversized coaxes off of four channels. Then you could run the tower speakers off four channels bridge to two, and then run your subwoofers off the matching subwoofer amp that I'll show you in a minute. Can I access the preamp set, uh, the DSP presets through the radio or how does that work? They actually are assuming that you might have a different radio that came in the boat. So there are manual trigger wires that you can use, or you can use a controller. But the manual trigger wires, I think, are the these uh, allows you to have switches, oh, which is is probably in a marine environment the most reliable in the long term. There's nothing I can't throw at you, is there? <laughs> I try. <laughs> now, I was talking a minute ago about why you would use delay in a boat because most boat installations don't actually use delay, but um, let me show you, a uh, because uh, I have a I have a chart for that. So let's assume here that we had a speaker on the left side of the boat and it's magically flat from 20 to 20K and has no variation at all. Okay, we're we're in we're in a perfect uh, magical world here. La la land. Yeah. And we took another one of those speakers and we put it on the other side of the boat. And it also has the same frequency response, but they are not the same distance mm. from the listening area. This is the set of cancellations that we get in the listening area, if one speaker is 27 inches farther away than the other speaker. And you can see there's a lot of energy 
that our customer was probably expecting and probably paid for that's getting lost because we don't have a way to deal with cancellations. So that's the way that I like to explain to people why delay would be important even if stereo isn't something that enters their their mind when they think about marine audio. So that said, the eight channel and the mono have um, the. I have to confess, there's a, there's a big flaw here that I got to apologize for. We don't have RGB lighting on the amplifiers. What? How but, dare you come to market without I'm that? I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> um, we do have a lot of features over here on the right, though. Um, this amplifier here can do a thousand watts into one ohm. It'll do 800 watts into two ohms, uh, and they all meet the same marine specs. So. If you haven't thought about DSP for a marine application, I think it's time. I think you should look into the HMD8, uh, definitely. So they do have some non-DSP amplifiers in the line. They have the HCP 2 and 4 marine. Uh, the 2 is 120 watts by 2, which is perfect for the 8-inch coaxes or the towers, or you could bridge it and run a subwoofer. And then the 4 is 65 by four, which is perfect for the six and a half inch coaxials, or you could bridge it into a two channel amp. One thing about these is that these are class AB. Um, I believe they're class AB. Um, so you want to make sure that you, or you don't have to worry about interference with your radio if you have somebody that uses radio replacement. Now these are class D. These are the mini amps that are primarily used by dealers for uh, power sports. They are both IP64 rated. The 300 watt mono is for the subs and the 60 by four is for coaxes and you can bridge it to two channel for towers. And you can see it's the size of an iPhone. So it's not large. Okay, so that was marine audio. Let's talk about motorcycle audio for just a minute because like I said, we've got motorcycle season around the corner. Uh, salt water isn't a big concern, but water is a big concern, and so is ultraviolet, and so is temperature. And we also can't use heavy speakers because they're going to weigh down the bike and make it top heavy and ruin the handling. So SPL Show is a line that's existed with Hertz for a while, and it was really designed for pro audio, uh, like the pro audio concepts in, in, in cars. But they found out that many North American dealers were using SPL Show in motorcycles. So they designed a line of SPL Show with neo magnets and new smaller housings to work better in motorcycles. And several models have Harley compatible baskets. If you take a Harley speaker out and you put a non Harley speaker in, a lot of times you end up having to cut the mount to make the, uh, to get rid of keys that are, exist there for the Harley frame. Um, they also have Harley compatible connectors. There's a bullet tweeter that has 107 dB sensitivity it's got reduced depth and weight over the old model, um, and it has better high temperature performance than the old model. There's a few different versions, so you want to make sure to talk to Automobility to make sure you order the right one. Uh, the six and a half mid-range is waterproof and has a UV resistant cone. It is 10 millimeters shallower than the model it replaced, and it's half the weight. And it has both Harley and standard terminals. But the part that I think is really cool here is it's 97 dB efficient, which is just insane uh, when you compare that to, to most car audio stuff. But it needs um, to be. And the frame also fits the Harley uh, uh, holes, the speaker provisions. They make an 8-inch version also. It's called the SV200. Uh, same weatherized elements, 100 dB sensitive. So it'll just take your head off. Now, they do have some coaxes. There is a six and a half coax. Um, this one has a bunch of rubber parts around the tweeter post to keep the weatherproof design intact. And the tweeter is fairly low profile for an inch, uh, an inch and four tenths. And it has the breaker built into it that you can use or delete as you prefer. Uh, but it still fits in the Harley spots. And it will fit underneath grills because of the low profile tweeter. And here is the, uh, the three-way six by nine. It's a saddlebag friendly design. A lot of dealers are putting these in saddlebags and it's 95 and a half dB efficient. So that's motorcycle. So that puts you guys in the driver's seat. Man, that was a bad one. For what's coming up 
in Q2 and Q3. Um, Q2 is really going to be where you can take advantage of marine and motorcycle. But now let's talk about the core business of mobile audio. Um, they're celebrating 25 years this year. And this is sort of where they started 25 years ago and the flagship right now. Um, that's the original high energy component set. I don't think I'd ever seen a picture of this before a few weeks ago, but I saw the family resemblance uh, on the tweeter because it resembles some of the other tweeters I have seen from Hertz in, in past years. This kit had better off axis response in a car door than its competition 25 years ago. So the amplifier came out in 2006. It won a CES award in 2007. That means they've been doing amplifiers for 15 years, which you know, is a long time. And sometimes Hertz is overshadowed by their cousin, Audison, in the awards because Audison has been doing it longer and is perceived by a lot of people as a audiophile company. But Hertz has won more than its fair share of European and worldwide awards for their products. Um, the speaker line works like this. If you don't speak Italian, I don't speak Italian. So this is kind of useful. Mie is the flagship line. It Mie means a thousand in Italian. And unlimited power handling and dynamics are really important to them. You drop down to Cento, which is probably the bulk of the business for a lot of dealers. This is, Cento means a hundred. And it's more efficient, but it still has a lot of models that are intended for amplified use. Diachi is 10 in Italian. This line is very efficient and very easy to demo and very easy to, it jumps out of the board. Because if you have 3 dB more efficiency, you, it's like you added an amplifier that's twice as big. So Diachi is really a great OEM upgrade path. And then Uno is Italian for one, and that's their entry level. We don't have time to talk about all these today. I won't be able to drag you through the technical ditch on all of them, but we're going to focus on Mie and Cento because of the amount of time that we have. And I put together this map because I found it really tough to learn all the different sublines. We just talked about all the speakers, so we, that gives us an idea. Now, after we talk about the speakers, we'll talk about the subs. There aren't subs in every line. There's four different levels of subwoofer performance. Then we're going to talk about amplifiers a little bit. And then we have DSP. There's kind of a range of DSP, depending on how you set it up. There aren't very many lines that have this kind of toolbox for you. That, that's pretty rare. Now, can, here's a problem that I mentioned can, earlier. And can, I don't know can you hear me? Just, yeah. uh, just I wanted to give you a time check so you can frame yourself. We have 15 minutes. Got it. I think we're doing good. Perfect. So this is where our head is when we're driving a car. And you can see that the left speaker and the right speaker are at very different angles from the listener, but they don't match. They are at different angles. And that's why some speakers sound dramatically different on the left and the right. But no matter what, the speaker doesn't sound the same as it would in a display board at eye level pointing at us. Now, that's how a home audio speaker would perform. Below a 1,000 cycles, left and right doors would sound the same. But as you play higher and higher, the performance degrades. And once you get up to around 3K, neither door speaker is going to do a good job for the listener in a car. So if you use that speaker and you made a two-way kit, you get a big hole in the upper mid-range right here when you listen to it in a car. And that's something that Hertz decided to address early on. So they designed tweeters that play lower and midwoofers that play lower or play higher, sorry. And their crossover point averages an octave lower than most car audio six and a halves. And the result is they get a nice smooth response that doesn't have a big hole in it. And we're going to talk about how they did the MIA Legend family design elements here. The four key speakers we'll talk about are the ML280, uh. the ML700, the ML1650, and the ML2500. These are their flagship. If you're designing a Hertz audio system and you want the best you can get, you use these drivers in a four-way active configuration. So all of them use neodymium. They all use low carbon steel for the top and the back plates. They all have Faraday style rings built in to reduce the distortion, especially at high output levels. And they all use big voice coils to dissipate heat. They also have this technology that was developed by uh, 
Hertz called boundary free surrounds. Most surrounds start at a right angle to the cone. Their surrounds creep up to the cone. They get a few millimeters of extra diameter that way for extra output. Um, they use V cones that will help them get better off axis performance when it's needed. And all of these use a cast aluminum frame. The cast aluminum frame, frame has a couple of benefits in cars. One of them is if somebody screws the screw in wrong with their Makita, they're not going to tweak the stamped frame. One of them is that the, uh, the frame will dissipate heat away from the voice coil better. So there's the six and a half. And you can see what I mentioned earlier with the home audio speaker, but the Mie Legend has much better performance here. They have an octave higher extension, even though it's at the bottom of the car door. And that is a key difference that you can't demo in the display board as well, but you can definitely hear it in a car when you use the 1650 in a door. Now, here's the ML280 tweeter that you would pair with it. It's a big tweeter. You can see from this chart, it plays really high, it goes above 20K on the right side, but it also plays incredibly low on the left side. You can actually cross this over at 1800 Hertz. And when you do that, you have this kit, the MLK 1650 which won Best Product Award when you put them together when they were introduced. Now, this is a 700, uh, ML700 3-inch midrange. I love these pictures of these 3-inch midranges because they look like massive subwoofers, and then it turns out they're only 70 millimeters across. Um, once again, you can see that this speaker plays up to 20K. Uh, you could use it as a wideband or as in a center channel if you need to. So it's a really high-quality midrange, and it's available in a kit with the tweeter. If you buy this kit, you can put the mid and the tweeter with a passive crossover on one set of amplifier channels, and then you pick your mid bass for the bottom end. You can pick the six and a half, which we talked about a moment ago, or you can use the seven that I'll talk about in a minute. Now, here's the 10 inch subwoofer. This is a really rare subwoofer. It has a neodymium magnet, which is unheard of for a sub, and it has a Faraday induction management ring, which you can see in this cutaway right here. And that helps reduce distortion. Distortion out of a subwoofer is what makes a subwoofer seem to disappear as a source of sound, which is really important in trucks and SUVs where you, your ears have almost a straight shot to the subwoofer in some cases. So you can assemble the entire system and have a world-class MIE Legend audio system. Now, this is the 1800. It's an oversized mid-bass. doesn't fit in every car. It has a larger voice coil, and it will play a little bit lower and it has 27% more cone area than the ML1650. It'll handle 200 watts RMS. So if you can fit an ML1800, it's a great speaker to use instead of a six and a half. There is a MIE Legend introductory kit that uses some of the MIE Pro technology, primarily a ferrite magnet here, but it does have a 28 millimeter tweeter, but in a less costly housing than the ML280. So they do have a uh, sort of a uh, entry-level MIE legend, if you will. Now, when you go down to MIE Pro, we go to ferrite magnets. We still have the cast frames and the boundary-free surrounds. They still use the V-cone geometry, but it's a two-piece cone in many cases. They still use two-way and three-way kits. They have 25 millimeters as well as one 25 millimeter tweeter. They will support a five and a quarter and have two different six and a halves. And they also have some coaxes, a six and a half and a six by nine coax. And then they have 10 and 12 inch subs. There isn't a 12 inch sub in the legend line. There's an eight and a 10. So as an example, this is the MPK 165.3, has a one inch tweeter rather than an inch and an eighth. Um, and they use the ferrite magnets. So there are coaxes uh, for when you need rear speakers. I like to use coaxes. And that's a good spot. But the most popular SKUs from this line are probably the subs because they use ferrite magnets on the subs, but they still use the one-piece V-cone and they are still cast frame. And these are probably the most popular subs. They're really high performance. So a few words about the H8 before we run out of time. Uh, the H8 has the more traditional uh, family uh, user interface with the graphic EQ and the car map on the left. Uh, you can see the car map up in the upper left corner. You can see the output levels are in the center and you can see the crossover section is at the top. So you don't have to go around to a bunch of different windows. It's all in front of you all the time. 
there's the EQ. Some people really love that 30 band uh, graphic EQ. So with Cento, and I'm going to go through Cento pretty quickly here so I don't run out of time on you guys. But what you're going to see are stamped frames and one-inch tweeters. And with the Cento models, they're intended to be able to work off factory power. You don't have to have an amplifier. Um, they do sell the, the speakers. Sorry, let me step back. They do sell these speakers available to you guys in raw driver form or in kits. Most people buy the kits. And they also have a 6, a 5, a 4, a 5x7, and a 6x9 coax. So when you're looking for a deck and 4 speaker, this will work off deck power and give you more output than you expect. Now here's something that a lot of dealers haven't tried. And this is one of the things I wanted to emphasize today is the Cento subs, the 10 inch and 12 inch sub, which are available in two and four ohm voice coils. Uh, these are intended to give you performance in the fattest part of the market curve, where most people are looking for subwoofers. These are the Hertz entry into that. And Hertz didn't have an entry in this category for a year or two. So some dealers haven't tried these out, especially with the chaos we had last year. Um, I would recommend that you do it. They're optimized for very small sealed enclosures, and they definitely punch out of their weight class. So Cento Pro just has a couple of SKUs. These are designed to work with amplifiers, and they use the Mie Pro tweeters. So they definitely have better highs and better off-axis performance in the car, and they also have two coaxes, the 6 and the 6x9. So other than that, Ben, I'm afraid I don't have anything. No, well, we have a lot to talk about, though. <laughs> we have a lot to talk about. We didn't um, get into SPL or Dieci or compact power amplifiers, but I think we, we did cover a lot. We did cover a lot, and I don't know how quickly you can access some of uh, the previous slides here. I want Absolutely. You to go past. If you want to, if we can hop back to the Marine, because Ken, if you look at Industry Week, Marine has been a huge portion of the of the of the conversation, and I wanted people to recognize that Hertz has a certain commitment to Marine. And I wanted to point out a couple of things that make it different for, for dealers to consider. I am enjoying the benefits of the touch bar technology. Oh, there you go. Touch bar technology. Beautiful. So um, if you can just go back. We, you talked about the, uh, the speakers. We didn't talk about what are the size options available in the coaxials. Um, there are eight inch coaxials, which are this model here in the HMX line. And then with similar performance, there is also a HMX six and a half. Okay. So with that, and I'm sorry I didn't explain that better, but thanks for, uh, for mentioning that. So with HMX, that's the higher end performance line with an eight and a six and a half. And then when you go to the hex line, that is six and a half only, power sports and marine, but probably a different kind of boat. Uh, right. Probably a different uh, overall system price point. Do the six, okay, the 6.5s also have RGB capability? Yes. But I would presume that the 6.5 are a little bit more catered towards deck power versus more power handling on the HMX? The way I would say it is the HEX 6.5s are more something that you would run maybe off the 50 watts uh, in the, the source units mm -hmm. or maybe the 60 watts in the Power Sports amp. Um, but when you go up to the HMX, then you're probably going to want to run it off a, a, a full size amplifier because you're probably going to have HMX eights and HMS six and a halves in different parts of the craft. And you're going to want to run them off different channels of the amp. If we could quickly go to the DSP portion of this presentation. Absolutely. So there are not many offerings on the market currently in the DSP category for Marine. This is one of them. Um, and I find it very interesting that it's available here. And I love this is so this is a one page interface GUI. There's no it does when you when you select certain parts of the interface, it does have pop outs to let you see more of them without getting rid of everything else. For example, if you go to the equalizer window, you can see that it it grows. It didn't get rid of everything else. But when you're doing equalization, it gives you a lot more visibility than you do, say, in the overall view. Gotcha. And you said four presets were available? Uh, there are three memories. Three, three memories. zones and three memories. Now, unless you're running like a 80-foot yacht, I think three memories would probably suit most of your needs. Well, you could buy two. Or you... 
Yes, you could buy two. Why yeah. not? Uh, let's quickly go to the... Um, I want to talk about the uh, speakers in the Melee line. Absolutely. Because I did notice on the website that there was a line that you didn't speak to, and that is energy, and I'm trying to figure out where that fits in the line. Well, that's a good question. And actually, energy is a line that was in the um, production uh, or the lineup for Hertz for many years, but it was discontinued some okay. time back, and some dealers bought heavily of the remaining production. So it remains on the website because some dealers still have some in inventory, but it has been replaced by the Cento line. So sorry about the confusion on that. No, no worries. I, I just want you, dealers might be confused. They go, well, how come Ken didn't talk about it? Now we know why. Uh, so of these speakers, um, you mentioned that the drivers in the Melee line, they're available a la carte? They are. In fact, there was just a new... Um, What's, what's the right way to say this? Most of them have been, been available a la carte. Um, the 28 millimeter tweeter in the plastic housing, the less costly 28 millimeter tweeter was just added to the lineup earlier this year and or in the past year. And that allows you to uh, use the larger tweeter technology and the low crossover point technology at a different price point than was available before. So if you're designing a system, and I didn't have a slide with this picture, I wish I did, but you've got two 28 millimeter tweeters, a 70 millimeter mid-range, a six and a half mid-base mid-range, and a seven inch mid-base only. So that's a lot of options. Yeah, especially uh, in an active setup. I mean, you can play all day long on that. Uh, there's a dealer in Saskatchewan who used a 70 millimeter mid range as a center speaker in an up mixer system uh, with no tweeter, and it did great. Yeah, but, well, you you said right away that the middlers play very high. Yes. Uh, to 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 fill in the gap between the cutoffs between the tweeter and the mid ranges. Um. Uh. But what did I want to ask? Ooh, yes. Before before your question, one thing I should have put in here that I want to make sure dealers know about the passive crossovers for Mie Legend and Mie Pro come out of the box configured for your display board so that if you put them in the display board, they will be set to best advantage. But if you read the manual, and yes, yeah, speakers come with a manual, there is advice on how to set the passive crossover switches. You can see them on the screen right now. You can see the switches in that crossover. There is advice on how to set them differently for different cars. So oh. read the manual. Very nice. Um, of the line, of speakers, which are there any of those that are actually made in Italy still? Um, I don't know that any of the speaker manufacturing is done in Italy. I think that once they owned that facility outside of Italy and China, that they decided to move all the R and D and testing there. I think it probably was a lot harder to try to have two production facilities like oh, that. No, no, I just needed to ask the question because inquiring minds would like to know. And last but not least, from the amplification standpoint, uh, I know we didn't get a chance to talk about DSP a whole lot. Is there anything you want to speak to as far as Hertz and DSP? Um, I think that, that's a tricky one. The, the H8 automotive DSP is a unique piece. It isn't from one of Electromedia's other lines with a sticker on it. Uh, it's got four channels of input and it's got an optical input. And so if you're doing OEM integration and you get into a very complex situation, it might not be the perfect piece. You might want to bring in a piece from the Audison line to deal with say a 12 channel system. Right. Um, however, if you're using any of the external preamps that are available from some of the other companies that are on industry wake, I'm sure many of them have already spoken about these devices that give you clean, flat audio from an OEM system, then you can either run RCAs into the H8 or the optical into the H8 and continue that clean signal path all the way through. Jeff Smith's gonna be happy that I dropped his name on here because he literally just presented on that pack integrate unit that does have an optical Tosh link out that could go into an H8 DSP and give it a flat clean signal to optimize Jeff, your Jeff, Jeff and I are coordinated. You know. <laughs> are you, is that what that was? Okay. No, <laughs> no, it's Jeff's world, we're just living in it. Um, um, that's it for me as far as questions, Ken. I'm going to leave you the floor for the last minute to kind of send a message out to dealers and let everybody know how they can get this stuff. Well, Automobility is the uh, importer and distributor in Canada. 
and they've been the distributor for about a year. And we've been doing a lot of training with a lot of their staff to make sure that they are ready for your questions and support on all these products. So I know that they have good inventory and I also know that they have been paying very close attention to this brand and how to help dealers with this many SKUs because it's a lot of SKUs. We just spent 45 minutes and we didn't cover the entire line. No, no, we didn't, not even half. So I've talked to a number of dealers before this and I asked them, what would you want someone to know about being a Hertz dealer? And the, the theme that I got over and over was that you know their product's gonna make you look good. You know that when you go to use their product, it's going to make you look good because it's gonna make your customer happy. And my favorite customer retention program is always making it sound really stinking good. So that's probably a good there philosophy. You go. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Ward, for an uh, educational trip down Hertz Lane. I look forward to uh, you know connecting with you again on another electromedia product distributed by Automobility called Audison. We'll be it, back shortly for that one. It's great to see you, Ben. I hope I get to see you soon. Oh, it'll be real soon, faster than you think. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. Thanks, guys. All right, so there you have Ken Ward representing Hertz Audio on behalf of Automobility as our ongoing live coverage continues here from day seven of CMA Industry Week. Got lots more automobility goodness on the way. Don't you dare go away. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect.